So the winter is finally coming to a close and you know what that means. It is the pre-spawn, the time when our bass get the biggest, the baddest, and the fattest. And of course, that's the time when all of us as anglers want to get out in the water. We've been stuck inside all winter long, except for Florida. But for the rest of us fishermen and hunters, we've been stuck inside all winter long waiting to get out there and catch the bass. And of course, we don't want to get out there and let our jig soak for 30 seconds before the fish comes picks it up. We want to chunk and wind something at the speed of lightning, but there's so many reaction baits. And especially during the pre-spawn, they all have their place and all can work. But which three do I recommend for you guys all across the country for your pre-spawn bass? Let's talk about it. Well, how's it going folks and welcome back to another episode of TRF Instructionals. My name is Tyler and it is my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers by using the experiences that I have to teach you guys. And uh, I always start these off by saying I don't know everything, but I know a little bit. I've learned a lot over the past few years about how to really target largemouth bass specifically. I'm assuming this could apply to smallmouth and spotted, but they do have their different intricacies that make them different to target. But I'm talking about your southern largemouth bass right now. and. As we know, the pre-spawn bass are feeding up. They've been sitting out deep or up shallow, just not feeding a whole lot, not moving a whole lot all winter long. And they are finally getting ready to spawn. The females want to warm their eggs. They want to warm their belly to get ready to be on the bed. And the males have to feed up to have the energy to defend the nest. And so one of my favorite ways to catch them is of course on a reaction bait. And that's definitely one of the most fun. You know, fish in the pre-spawn, they just hit different. They hit with power and energy. And it's definitely one of the most fun fighting largemouth bass of the year. And in Texas, you know, our pre-spawn is from January to March, depending on where you are in Texas. The reason why I love to make kind of spring and summertime videos is because for most of the country, Texas is before the rest of the country in terms of season. So all of my videos for spring and summer line up perfectly. The fall, I'm a little bit lagging behind because we have a late fall. But I want to talk about my top three favorite reaction baits. Now I'm going to list off all the reaction baits right now that you could possibly throw in the pre-spawn. Tight wobbling crankbait, you know, I got 3XD, like semi deep crankbait, square bill, chatterbait, uh, spinnerbait, swim jig, underspin, flashy swimmer lipless crankbait. And I definitely use all of those at certain times throughout the pre-spawn, depending on the weather, water clarity, and the cover I'm fishing. But three of them really, really stand out, in my opinion, for not just lakes, but for ponds. You know, these three that I'm gonna explain to you guys, I get asked all the time, hey, I have a grassy pond, I've got a pond with wood in it, and it's the pre-spawn, what bait should I throw? And I respond with, of course, a Cinco, um, whether wacky or Texas rigged, all that kind of stuff. But I always respond with these three reaction baits. The flashy swimmer, the lipless crankbait, and the chatterbait or vibrating jig. And so we're going to go through all three of these exactly, you know, what size I like to throw, the colors, and the rod, reel, and line that accompanies each one of these baits. So if you guys are not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. It means so much to be able to bring you guys along with me on my adventures across the country and the globe catching these bass. So let's jump into it. So the first bait that I mentioned is the flashy swimmer. Now a lot of you guys might not understand that exact terminology. Really what it is, is it is just a Texas rigged or swim bait hook rigged soft plastic swim bait that uh, really just catches fish in all circumstances. It comes, and the reason why it's called a flashy swimmer is because it comes on a, I think the company owner hooks invented the flashy swimmer, but that's just kind of the Kleenex brand name that it has now. And it is a belly weighted swim bait hook with a little bit of a wire to a usually a willow leaf silver blade. And this combination in the water is just incredible in rocks and wood and grass. It is definitely one of my favorite baits in the pre-spawn. And it's one that I fish most often. I mean, as soon as those fish get into full pre-spawn mode, I'm throwing this one and the lipless crankbait for a one-two punch basically all day. And the reason why I love this is because not only is it weedless, well, I mean, it's not weedless right now, because there we go. Not only is it weedless, but it just has, in my opinion, like the, the dual quality of a swim bait and a spinner bait. So of course it has the blade to, to push some water and vibration and get that flash to it, but it's also much more weedless than a spinner bait is, and it is a soft body. So when a fish grabs it, it really feels like it's actually holding on to something real. And the way that I usually retrieve this is I cast it out there, let it sink to the bottom or whatever, you know, water column the fish are sitting in and I reel it slowly back in. 
There's rarely a time when I'm burning this thing. Yeah, I, I love to let this thing, you know, I, I reel it over a grass bed and kind of let it sink into a hole and then I pop it out of the hole and keep reeling it. And I've gotten some giant fish on this thing, especially in East Texas. So if you guys are around grass and clear water, this bait can definitely have an effect. Uh, and the, of course, the, the size of the flashy swimmer determines the rod reel and line that I throw. I was not throwing this one today. This was actually, I was throwing down in El Salto uh, for a TV show I was shooting, but I do usually throw like the 3.8 or the 4.2 inch. I don't like to go super big unless I know I'm going for big bass like in a tournament. And then I'll throw the 4.8 or the five inch one. Uh, this here is the Strike King uh, Rage Swimmer. Love this, it's an incredible bait. Definitely amazing consistency and I can catch five to six fish on each one. So the line that I throw it on is 15 pound across the board. It doesn't really matter what size I'm throwing except for this bigger one. I like to throw it on 17 pound line. Uh, and the rod and reel, any loose combination you want. I have the Classic Pro on here with some 15 pound Seaguar Invisex, and then I have the TP1 Black Speed Stick 7.2 Medium Heavy. I do prefer a medium heavy for ones this big. You can get away with a medium on any of the smaller sized flashy swimmers. And I forgot to mention color, I usually stick to some kind of bait fish. So a white, a pearl, uh, this one right here is some kind of sexy shad. So it's a, it's a blue top with kind of like a chartreuse green clear bottom, really any sort of shad colors. But for these next two, in the springtime, I almost always throw green pumpkin or red on these next two. And the next one, of course, is going to be the lipless crankbait. This here is the Strike King Red Eye Shad, one of my favorite lipless crankbaits. One that I throw almost exclusively all across the country in the spring. And I usually throw the two tap version. I just like the sound of it better. I feel like it really gets those bigger fish to react, especially when a cold front hits. I think the two tap gets uh, a lot more big bites. And any kind of red color. If it's red or orange, you can't go wrong. Uh, I will do a specific video as soon as I start catching a whole lot of fish on these baits, why I, t I use red in the winter time. But for now, I saw a video uh, by a pro named David Dudley. He will be on the Bass Pro Tour this year, and he explained in, in great detail why he likes to use red during the springtime. I will have his video linked below and up in the corner. Not my channel, but I would love for you guys to go check it out. He's a cool dude. The reason why I love a lipless crankbait is because it is so much more versatile in a pond situation as well as a lake. So if you're fishing a square bill crankbait, which I also love in the spring, you can't really fish it in a pond except for on the bank, but if you're casting out in the middle, half your cast really isn't being effective because a square bill needs to be hitting the bottom to be most effective. And so that's why I like a lipless crankbait because you can reel it whatever speed you want and, ma and maintain contact with the bottom. So let's say you're in a pond, you cast out in the middle and you let it sink to the bottom and you kind of like slowly reel it and then speed it up as you get to the bank. That way you keep your bait in contact with the bottom the whole time. So a lipless crankbait, I just feel like is a much more versatile lure and especially this one right here in this color mm, it catches some gosh darn big fish and uh, the combo that I throw this on depends on the type of cover I'm fishing so if it's open water I throw it on the 6.9 uh, uh, custom speed stick crankbait rod by Luz it is a 6.9 medium heavy it says it's meant for square bill crankbaits but I mean you can use it for whatever and I enjoy this rod because it's, it's just stiff enough to, th to uh, set the hook on this bait, but not too uh, long that I can't be accurate with it. So if I'm casting this around docks or around certain grass beds, I like to have this length of rod. But if I'm ripping it out of grass, almost always throwing it on the next rod that I will explain here in a second. It is a 7.6 medium heavy. It's called the Magnum Rattle Trap Rod. So the reason why I love this bait, like I mentioned, it's versatile. It catches big fish and... Uh, it just looks good, man. I mean, the sound is awesome and it just catches some dang, some dang donks. And the reel, of course, is the BB-1 Pro. Amazing crankbait reel. You can't get any better than this. Uh, the line on this I have is 12 pound Seaguar Abrazex fluorocarbon. And if I'm ripping it out of grass, it's either 17 pound Seaguar Invisex or usually 50 pound uh, Seaguar Smackdown braid. The combos change a little bit with the type of cover I'm throwing. Open water, fluorocarbon, uh, grass, usually braided line because you're not trying to finesse the fish into biting, you're trying to get a reaction by ripping it out of the grass. And the last one that I fish both in ponds and in lakes, both in rocks, clear water, dirty water, stumps, grass, is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. This here is Strike King's vibrating jig they released last year. As you can see by the head, I have caught quite a few fish on this one. It uh, It's a fish catcher. I don't exactly know why fish like this thing. I think it just vibrates and it has a big profile. 
and uh, it just catches some good fish. The reason why I love this, like I mentioned about the lipless crankbait, is that this is very, very versatile. It can be fished in practically any water column, uh, with the exception of really, really deep. It's hard to reel a vibrating jig uh, at a slow speed. It's more kind of like a moderate speed lure, but it just catches good fish. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. The colors that I use, generally green pumpkin and this new one here, this is, uh, Honestly, I don't have a package with me, but it's some kind of Rayburn Red or, or uh, Falcon Lake Craw. And it's just a red with some, uh, with some black and, and green pumpkin in it. And of course it has the painted black and red blade. I love that combination there. So with this, I usually throw it on 15 pound fluorocarbon with the Luz Hyper Mag. I sometimes throw the flashy swimmer on the Hyper Mag as well. Hyper Mag is just unbelievable. I mean, I know it's expensive, it's 300 bucks, but it is by far one of the best reels I've ever used. It casts so far, it is smooth, it is durable. I love this thing. And then I have it on the Magnum Rattle Trap Rod. It is a 7.6, usually, like I mentioned, Magnum Rattle Trap lipless crankbait rod, but I do enjoy it for spinner baits and chatter baits as well, just because it, it, it loads up really well. Like it, it's, it's a medium heavy, so you can throw a Carolina rig on it, you can throw a deep crankbait, but I just really love the distance I get with this cast. I can launch it out there and it still loads up really well and doesn't yank the hook out of their mouth. So that is all that I got for you guys today. Of course, I hope that you enjoyed something and if you did, drop a comment, let me know that you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, the comment section is always open. I love to see you guys interacting with each other down there and I always answer any questions that are posed. Uh, all the gear that I mentioned will be linked below in the description. And again, if you guys would shop for your tackle through those links down below, not only shop for you know, for Strike King, Lou, Seagar, all my sponsors, uh, but use the links down below because most of those links are affiliate links. So when you guys order through those, occasionally you guys can get discounts. So for AFCO, I have a discount. Uh, for ConnectSkill, I have a discount. Um, for all these companies, I have ways that I want to help you guys save money. And then also when you click those links, it allows me to make money through those links with my sponsors, especially with Tackle Warehouse. So whenever you guys order Tackle Warehouse, click those links below. It helps me out a ton. And with that said, if you guys missed my last two videos I filmed right out here on Lake LBJ, catch some good fish, some good healthy winter, like late winter fish. It'll be linked down below. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Jewel Fishing.